welcome back to the Scenic Root Astrology. My name is Michaela. Today we're talking about Sagittarius, Jupiter, and the ninth house. Please, before we begin this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow and it helps us reach information out to those who really need it. Let's get into it. I love Sagittarius. Sagittarius is on the, the second and third house cusp in my chart. So I actually tend to bring in a lot of Sagittarius friends. Literally all of them are either Sag Sun or Sag Rising. <laughs> With the Sagittarius energy, it's coming after we have just went through a Scorpio experience where we were deeply submerged in these intense situations or scenarios in life, especially if you're moving from an eighth house year to a ninth house year, okay? The eighth house year, um, definitely watch the energetic upgrade video that I did about the Scorpio archetype, Pluto, Mars, and the eighth house, because Sagittarius is emerging after Scorpio. It's coming out from the depths of these murky waters where we experience loss and betrayal and hardship and death and rebirth, you know, metaphorically, physically, sometimes um, philosophically. Okay. And so we come out into this Sagittarius fire, this inspirational type of energy that's searching for the meaning of it all, searching for a deeper meaning of life. You know, it's about asking big questions around the ideologies of life, of religion, right? What is our, what is my perspective? What is that? What does this mean to me? Okay. How do I orientate my belief systems and where am I shooting my arrow? Okay. Because Sagittarius is the archer and it shoots its arrow out beyond the horizon, beyond what we can see and what we know. And we're following that destiny, that line, okay? And I'll explain why it becomes a part of our destiny um, and the discernment of finding our own destiny later in this video as we get deeper into this archetype. But just to give you, get you started on this backdrop of, of the, the Sagittarius, which I very much love this energy, um, I love all the energies, but uh, this one is just so inspirational. You know, this can be the teacher, the philosopher, the uh, multi-author, book author. Um, you know, this can be somebody who pulls, uh, if you have strong Sagittarius in your chart, if you have strong Sagittarius placements, or if you have a strong ninth house, you can pull these ideas and these beliefs, you know, from a higher wisdom, a higher consciousness, but you have to go through these Scorpio energies, if you will, to, to get uncomfortable, to actually get in situations where you have to have a different lens and a different meaning and a search for that. Okay. So what you can think about is this is an area in your chart, the ninth house, Sagittarius placements. Okay. Jupiter. This is areas in your chart that you're expanding and you're growing all the time, always evolving, always developing new beliefs, okay? And this is the way that you orientate your own reality, all right? And that's why everyone's reality is different because we all have these Sagittarius placements, the Jupiter, we all have it in different areas of our chart. And it leads us into these different experiences that are our own, where we can create our own belief system, where we orientate our own reality based on what we've experienced. The Sagittarius archetype can be very oriented towards expanding its education and its higher mind, okay? The ninth house has a lot to do with, um, you know, college, if you will, or, or learning different religions, or maybe you decide to go study under a monk for a year or two or whatever, you know, these, these broader types of learning experiences that stretch our philosophies, stretch the way that we're perceiving the, our reality in the world, okay? It's where religion is born. And there is a sense of safety and security within this archetype because people are drawn to safety and security in finding a meaning, a meaning for something or a purpose for why this happened or what, what, what this means or where do I go after I die, okay? These sense of, of exploratory, if you will, type of uh, quests, mental quests, um, 
that we go on within our intellectual mind and within our heart can give us a sense of security around the whole reason why we are here in the first place. This is very much your own personal lens of reality. So, and I find this archetype extremely important for us to talk about right now because we are, we still have the, the nodes, the lunar nodes of the moon, which is a collective backdrop of energy for us all that are in Gemini and Sagittarius with the south node in Sagittarius. And if you can think back over the last 18 months, because this cycle is an 18, 19 month cycle, and it's not going to come back for another 19 years, uh, we are waning away a lot of the ideologies that culture is experiencing right now, okay? So um, when you have, for instance, the transiting nodes through this, there will be a collective backdrop where entire societies are kind of letting go of belief systems that don't serve them anymore okay and that's when we would go into the gemini north node the polarity point because we always want to take in the polarities of of every sign for it to be actually balanced and harmonious so reaching out asking questions gemini talking getting different belief systems and then also knowing that other people are going to have their own lens of reality too. And we can just expand like Jupiter would expand and stretch our knowledge around this, stretch our thinking or our perspective or perceptions of our reality, okay? And the nodes, we still have a couple months left, right? Until the node shift into Taurus and Scorpio in January. So these are like the final weeks of, of this being formulated for us, okay? And this won't happen again for another 18, 19 years where we will see these nodes in, in these signs again. And you can see this play out. You can see Sagittarius show up because every culture will have its own, um, if you will, bigger cosmological belief structure set in place. You know, like I've lived in many countries. I have a strong ninth house where cancer is on the cusp. Okay. So it's Sagittarius uh, undertones, but with cancer, okay, the home. So I've lived in other countries and I actually feel more at home when I expand and I go and spend some time somewhere foreign, okay? Because Sagittarius in the ninth house and even Jupiter sometimes can bring us to foreign lands, foreign languages, foreign ways of thinking about things that aren't from where we grew up around. I spent a year in China and there are so many differences compared to the United States culture. And I've also spent time in Barcelona where you have siesta, which guys, we should have siesta every single day, but you have siesta time, okay, where we don't have that in the United States. We're like the grinding nine to five type of culture. Um, but then when you expand and you get out into these other parts of the world and you see how other people are living, you kind of get a sense of what actually feels safe and secure for you. So that's when we get back to this safety and security sense. There is actually an in conjunction between the Sagittarius and the Cancer archetype. So oftentimes we don't see because with in, conduct, in conjunction is a blind spot in the chart. We don't see what other differences can make us feel safe and secure beyond of what we know. So it's important to expand. It's important to reach out into that Gemini access, okay? And to collect more data, collect more information, have different conversations with people, not be so dogmatic, which can be a shadow side of the Sagittarius archetype where it's like, my truth is the only truth and that is the only truth that exists. No, that would be a poor way to express this archetype, but we can definitely see that in politicians, for instance. We can see that through and through. They usually have very strong Sagittarius or ninth house placements somewhere in there that makes them a little bit dogmatic that, um, you know, they might not be willing to expand on other opinions, okay? That's why it's important, again, to be really... Uh, self-aware of of your lens that you're looking through but then understand that other people will have a different lens and what can you take what can you take and what can you leave apart okay and that actually plays into the square between Sagittarius and Virgo in the zodiac in our chart we all have this in our chart where Virgo helps us pick apart and discern what isn't 
uh, true for us, okay? Because Sagittarius also is about finding your truth, okay? And you will gain that truth through the wisdom you gained in your eighth house, in your Scorpio placements, in your Pluto dynamics, all right? All of this <laughs> forms together and creates this whole bigger perspective, okay? And then that's why Sagittarius is the archer with the arrow, and it shoots out something beyond the horizon, right? Our destiny, if you will, which represents the, the Leo in our chart. If you're having a ninth house year, or you're experiencing a solar return that's amplify with the ninth house, or you have transits that are in your ninth house, like maybe your progressed moon is going through it, or the sun is traveling through it, you know, this might bring you out into foreign destinations. This might, you might meet foreign people, depends what's going on in your chart, right? But heavily, if you're in the ninth house year, which you will at the ages of eight, 20, 32, 44, 56, and 68, you very much could be brought into foreign lands and destinations. You could be meeting foreign people. It just depends what transits are going through your chart. You know, if the sun is going through your chart, um, if the moon, the progressed moon is going through your chart, hi little girl, you might move to a foreign country. Um, you might get a foreign partner that comes in, okay? You might meet a teacher. Teachers are definitely rooted in this. Um, teachers that are profoundly changing our life always will land in this chart where you, your belief system, your, your religion, or the way that you formulate or your own truths is now oriented by these new teachings that you pull in from the ninth house, you know, this could be when somebody goes back to college and gets their doctorate or their master's degree, okay? This could be like a significant job change that you have because your whole lens of reality for yourself shifts and changes because you just went through eighth house year, which was like, a lot of uh, transmutation internally and emotionally. And how is that gonna, that's gonna affect you, right? Because now you're gonna take that inner wisdom that you just went through and you're going to formulate it out through your perspective of the world and the way that you orientate everything, okay? There is um, sometimes a strong yearning to make a meaning out of life in, in the ninth house year, to want to move about because it's a mutable energy, want to learn more, want to make connections between other worlds, okay, if you will. I mean, and this could very much be like a psychic thing. You know, you could be drawn to these psychic uh, abilities, if you will, or connections or want to go uh, see a medium, for instance, or become a medium. Um, you might just want to learn from other people who don't, they're just different than you, right? Because you want to expand yourself and expand your knowledge. And this will tie into Jupiter in the chart because Jupiter is really the, the, uh, the barrier in our chart where we hold our belief systems and our cosmological truth, right? And our inner reality um, expressed in our outer reality, Okay. It is uh, expanding us. It's taking us out and it's asking us to orientate ourselves beyond horizons. My teacher, Simon Vorster, uh, evolutionary astrologer, he's amazing. He says that the expansion comes from a cross migration. Okay. And that means a cross migration, a, a uh, forming of different opinions and truths and realities and just crossing them with ours and that way we can actually expand on what we know you'll start to get it, get a sense when you're having a ninth house year or a ninth house transit um you know or strong sagittarius focus any of these themes that throw up that throw out that we're talking about, right? You will start to feel your yourself actually be pulled out from this outer perspective. It's almost like you're 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 almost Aquarius. You're not Aquarius yet. We'll get to the Aquarius video, but you're is starting to expand yourself and stretch yourself out and and go for what you what you you're putting your arrow towards. Okay, what is that trajectory of your life going? Like, where do you want to reach out now and go? beyond what you know. This is about growing. These aspects in our chart is about evolving our soul, evolving in our life, doing things that are um, going to take us to the next step. This archetype 
Sagittarius, the ninth house in Jupiter will allow you to discover more about yourself. It'll allow you to have and formulate different ways of thinking that, um, you know, are beyond what you grew up with. Perhaps like with this, a strong archetype like this in your chart or a strong ninth house year or solar return, you know, you might, you might have formed a philosophy. You might have already experienced parts in your life that you actually want to share out into the world as well, right? This could bring up the publication area of the ninth house. You might want to write a book or start a blog or start a YouTube channel and start to share your knowledge um, around these new cosmological belief systems, these new religious belief systems or philosophies or ideologies that you've formed, you know? You might find yourself suddenly wanting to go learn about mythology or ancient culture, for instance, and really digging into the roots of our history and the meaning of everything, right? Or the science behind everything, you know, that can also be, it doesn't always have to be so religious based. I actually think that science and spirituality are one and the same. And so, but you might be oriented towards the more scientific side of it rather than the philosophical side of it or the um, psychological side of it. This kind of archetype in your chart and um, I mean, all of the archetypes will always help you grow and evolve in their own ways that are so entirely necessary for us to be whole and complete human beings, okay? But this one will bring you outside of your comfort zones, but not in an um, uncomfortable way, like Scorpio will. It's almost like you've already been through the, the deep emotional discomfort, and now you're formulating your own beliefs around it and your, your, your inner truth and your wisdom. The core and the law systems can also fall under this ninth house um, type or or a judge could have a strong Jupiter in their chart or strong Sagittarius uh, placements in their chart, you know, because again, they're, they're ruling out things and forming laws based on their perceptive of reality, okay? So it's important for us, I think, to be well-rounded and to always reach out into that Gemini placement in our chart as well. So you can synthesize everything, okay? And this is the point of these videos, this series is so that you, it helps you synthesize all these archetypes, all these areas and different placements in our chart. Um, so you can get a really rounded perspective of, of your own reality. I have Cancer uh, ninth house with the moon, Jupiter and Chiron conjunction and Ceres. So um, there's a nurturing quality that I bring to my ninth house within my teachings, okay? It's like I want to give knowledge to nurture the collective and I wanna share Jupiter, expand on my belief systems and my own personal experiences so that I can help open up other people to their own cosmological belief systems, you know? And I've had many experiences in my life where I, I always choose to be open. I always choose to communicate. Um, I always choose to, to um, you know, uh, ask other people of their, of their, what they're deeply thinking. And that pulls into my eighth house because part of my eighth house is Gemini, right? So, and then my values and my belief systems are based on my Sagittarius reality, right? But my, my ninth house is colored by cancer. So there's a nurturing quality. So if that can help you understand how we synthesize our chart placements, even when we don't have Sagittarius on the ninth house cusp, it still has a backdrop on that archetype that is on that cusp for us. And then we pull in those ninth house Sagittarius dynamics where it does fall in our chart, which mine happens to be in the second house and on the third house cusp. So the way I think and communicate and also the way that I establish my own self-assurance and values is based on my higher learning, my higher knowledge, um, I invest in courses, second house, what do you invest in? I invest a shitload of money into uh, co courses because that's what gives me nurturing and security, cancer, right? In the ninth house and then publishing, right? I'm writing a book, I'm creating um, a tarot deck with a, with a friend um, and I always get uh, different belief systems and I communicate with other people, eighth house on a very deeply profound perspective, right? I like to go really deep in communication with people because it helps me evolve and grow as well. And then my values and everything, it's just, it's a big circle. <laughs> so if you're having a hard time um, 
understanding how to synthesize your chart, you know, book a reading with me, book a reading, we can look at your chart, I can help you pull out these parts of yourself so that you can better understand yourself, you can better understand your purpose, your destiny, if you're having a ninth house year, what is that going to look like for you? What are you going to explore and expand on in that year? Okay, it's a very exciting year, because you come out from the darkness of the Scorpio, and you're like, oh, we're on fire, light, buoyancy, you know, one of my other teachers, uh, Tony Howard had called Sagittarius like the tigger of the zodiac, because it is, it's a bouncy energy, it's mutable, it can, it can shift, it wants to shift its perspective because of that square to Virgo in your chart, right, it wants to discern things, it wants to form your own lens of reality, Okay, so it's a it's a very exciting energy. I don't like all the fire energies. It's inspiration. It can spark you up, right? It can really light a fire under um, a project that you've been meaning to get done because now all of a sudden you have that inspiration. You have that quest, that pull for that meaning, right? That you want to go find it out. You want to dig deeper. You want to get the project done. You want to share your knowledge, right? You want to mm -hmm. talk and just share what you have to say with the world, okay? Or you wanna travel, you wanna see new things, you wanna expand on your horizon, right? So it's a very exciting energy. Mercury moved into Sagittarius today. So I'm definitely feeling the uh, the Sagittarius uh, within me as well. And the sun is in Sag. So um, this is like a perfect time to be throwing this video out, I think. So anyway, if you want to book a reading with me, you can go to my website, www.asherroots.com. You can book a reading. Um, I also do year ahead charts. If you're just wondering what your year ahead is going to look like for you, it's personalized. It's a PDF form. So you'll get that into your email and you can always look at it you can always read it i also do solar return charts um, and i mix that with predictive techniques like progressions um, and perfected years because i think that learning the the symbology of the archetype and the house and then what type of year you're going to have is going to really prep you um, for the year ahead right when you start your birthday okay so um like always, please give me a like and subscribe. Please share this with anybody who's learning astrology or wants to learn more about it. If they have Sagittarius placements, Sag, sun, moon, rising, this will help them understand themselves a bit more. I hope um, that these underlying energies might be strongly suited within, within their 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 cosmological makeup. Okay. And so this might help them resonate more with who they are, um, and deepen their meaning and purpose in life. Anyway, guys, um, the end of my video got cut off for some reason, some weird technological stuff, not even Mercury retrograde, no problem. Um, like always, thank you for being a subscription to my channel. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving me a like. Like always, you have unlimited potential, Cosmic Warriors. You have unlimited potential. I can't stretch this enough. Stretching so <laughs> Sagittarius of me right now. But I just want to give you the power and the knowledge so that you can continue to live the life that you desire, that you can continue to bring in the energy that you want and you need. My dog is also agreeing with everything. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. And um, I'll be back again soon. We're going to be exploring the Gemini axis of this um, of this mutable axis right here. It's very important. Please watch the Scorpio and Taurus videos since we are shifting into those lunar nodes. And please stay tuned for the rest of this um, this series that I'm doing of this astrological immersion so that you can understand better how to put your chart into a full perspective. Okay, that's really my goal here with everybody. My goal is to teach you all astrology so that you can utilize this in your day-to-day -day life and that you feel fully equipped to do this on your own. Okay, so much love. Okay, take care.